Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. A company called G Batteries Energy out of uh, Canada, I guess it's Ottawa, it's like a father-son company. They might have stumbled across a way to recharge electric car batteries much more quickly than they're currently being charged. Frankly, if this has any sort of legitimacy, if, if this turns out to be valid, uh, it, it is the most significant improvement that we could see in current electric vehicle technology, and it would be the turning point for electric vehicles. It's more important than battery chemistry. It's more important than battery energy density. All of those things, I think, need to be pursued as well. We, we do need to start reducing our usage of cobalt and we need to start lowering the battery cost and really we do also need to continue to improve uh, battery energy density mostly for the performance aspect of the the vehicles and the capabilities of the vehicles and there's a lot of movement on that front in other areas whether it's solid state semi-solid state but this pulse charging technology again, if valid, would be the single most significant improvement in EV technology because it changes fundamentally the way we look at recharging batteries. It's like using a, a sifter, right, and, and jostling it to allow more material to pass through is essentially the analogy that they used. And based on what they're saying, and they were using a Bolt EV as an example, they would be able to recharge a Bolt EV 50% in five minutes and all the way full in about 10 minutes. Now, really in the real world, what that would mean is an electric vehicle like the Bolt EV could literally travel as fast as a gas powered vehicle. There would be no need for gasoline powered vehicles at that point. There would be no need for fuel cell vehicles or plug-in hybrid electric vehicles or any of that. It would just eliminate the need for fossil fuels as a fueling source for your personal transportation. Now, there are some considerations that need to be made in that. So you're talking about recharging the Bolt EV, which is a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in 10 minutes. Well, that would require 360 kilowatts of power. So to achieve that end, even if everything else aligned, you still need those higher power charger stations in place. Now, we are building them out and they're becoming more available, but even when you look at something like Electrify America's charger network, uh, they're working on having almost 500 sites open by the end of the year, and most of those, but not all, have 350 kilowatt chargers, which would, again, be able to charge the Bolt EV to full in 10 minutes but not all of the chargers at each one of those sites is 350 kilowatts. So say you're using this technology and you're using a 150 kilowatt charger. Now, instead of that 10 minute recharge, it'd be 20 to 25 minutes to recharge the battery to full on those 150 kilowatt chargers. Now, that's still amazingly fast compared to you know what we currently have. And again, what I think is interesting is it bypasses that 1C charging rate that we currently have for the Bolt EV cells, which means that under normal circumstances, or I should say under the traditional charging method of constant current, constant voltage, the fastest you could theoretically charge a Bolt EV battery to full would be 60 minutes. Well, this is, you know, cutting that down to 10 minutes. That's basically bypassing the limitations that the manufacturer places at the cell level. And that is important because the Bolt EV's batteries are lower cost partially because of the lower charging rate, uh, because of the higher energy density. So if you can make lower costed batteries that really have no drawbacks in terms of charging times, that's a huge win for everybody. It means that we're gonna start seeing a lot more two to three to 350, maybe 400 mile EVs rolling around that don't need to cost more than $40,000 to produce. And that's a big deal. Now, the other consideration, even though they're saying this technology will be able to be applied retroactively to electric vehicles that are currently deployed, like the Bolt EV, 
the the problem is it does sound like there's going to need to be some upgrades on the car level it sounds like they're using a, almost a an ai based software program to determine when and how to pulse the power into the battery and if that's the case at the very minimum you're going to need some sort of a battery management uh, system upgrade on the vehicles and it might also require that the chargers themselves have some sort of a software and hardware upgrade to allow their dc to dc output to pulse it the way it needs to pulse in order to uh, respond to the battery's needs and charge it in the fastest way possible and then of course again getting back to you can't charge a battery in that speed without the hardware that will allow for that type of power and current something like the bolt ev would still need an upgraded charging harness on say the ccs port and everything else but if that were implemented then it sounds like there'd be no problem with a lot of the current electric vehicles right now seeing a significant upgrade in their ability to charge rapidly and it does mean that, you know, if you're one of those people that rarely takes long trips and you have a shorter range, 100 to 150 mile car with this technology, you could still make a 600 mile trip with only maybe 20 to 30 minutes of time devoted to stopping and charging. Now, it's going to be slower than if you drove flat out in a gas car, but still compared to where we are currently it doesn't put you that far behind and realistically and this is the thing that i want to emphasize because again it does go back to how much power those chargers can provide if that technology were implemented in my bolt ev i actually would end up just driving my bolt ev the same way i drove my volt along that 500 mile route i would still make a single meal stop for probably 35 to 45 minutes at that point, I wouldn't need to be using a 350 kilowatt charger. A 50 kilowatt charger would be fine because still somewhere in that eight hours worth of driving, I would probably stop for five to 10 minutes to use the bathroom and maybe grab a coffee depending on how I felt. So actually my trips would be the same and there would still be a purpose for a lot of these slower DC fast chargers that are out there as long as they match the location where you're going to stop. So at a lunch stop, a 50 to 100 kilowatt charger, still a very valid choice. However, we do need more of those freeway stops because if your intent is to travel really, really quickly, you still wanna be able to access one of those faster chargers. And that distribution still isn't anywhere near what it needs to be comparing the current public DC fast charging implementations against say gasoline stations where you know you're in the middle of nowhere maybe a thousand miles between two major cities you're going to need at least one or two or maybe three DC fast charging sites with these higher powered uh, chargers available in order to make that trip reasonably and that's why I don't want to dismiss some of this other technology, higher energy, uh, density batteries. Uh, I still think even with five to 10 to 15 minute recharges, we do need to focus on having at least a basic range of about 300 to 350 miles. Now, a lot of people might not use that all the time, but some people would. And so uh, the combination of those is really what's going to push EV technology over the top and eventually completely replace internal combustion engine vehicles. I hope you're as excited about this G batteries energy uh, technology as I am. I really hope it actually has some validity to it. And if it does, I, I look forward to uh, seeing how that actually changes the landscape of EVs, EV adoption, traveling with electric vehicles. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thank you for watching.